Welcome to A-B testing for PMs. I'm Andrew Han, Senior PM of Experimentation at Tinder, and you can reach me on LinkedIn if you have any questions or comments. A-B testing is also known as controlled experimentation. We'll be talking about why, how, when, and who. I hope you take away from this talk that A-B testing is a simple idea that can be simple to apply. It's useful for more than incremental optimization. A-B tests can yield deep insight and just test it. A-B tests have the highest ROI of any data activity. Why experiment? If you are interested in shark attacks, you'd find that looking at the data over time, shark attacks and ice cream sales tend to happen at the same time, they correlate. Now it's not so much that ice cream is causing sharks to attack, it's rather they, they correlate because people tend to go in the water uh, where the sharks are and they tend to eat ice cream uh, both in the summer. So you might've heard of the phrase, correlation does not necessarily imply causation. Uh, data analysis tells you something like A correlates with B. Controlled experiments, on the other hand, tell you that A causes B. Uh, controlled experiments are the scientific gold standard. Uh, the FDA uses it uh, with things like clinical trials uh, to demonstrate the efficacy of drugs and uh, vaccines, for instance. And uh, here's a picture on the right of a controlled experiment from Oregon State University. Uh, they applied a treatment to the plants on the left and the plants on the right uh, are what's called the control. They did not receive the treatment. So you can see that the plants uh, that did receive the treatment uh, are growing a bit better than the ones on the right. At Tinder, we run lots of experiments. Uh, Tinder, like in any internet app, is very amenable to controlled experiments uh, when you have lots of users who can be randomly assigned into uh, treatment and control conditions. Uh, in this experiment, we were testing the newsfeed button, you know, what it looks like. So the, the green and red uh, buttons at the bottom here are what we started with as the control. In the middle, we tried a kind of an outline treatment of those of the graphic design. And then on the right, we kind of inverted that design. Uh, so take a moment to uh, take a guess about which button design worked the best. So it turns out that the control uh, did the best. It was the winner by about five to 8% better newsfeed engagement. Uh, the one on the far right uh, was number two and the middle version uh, was number three. Uh, it, it appears to be that the higher contrast and color of the control uh, helped people engage with those buttons more. We can test uh, kind of more uh, deeper experiences with experiments, you know, not just superficial uh, button changes. Uh, at Tinder, we've run a, a, several experiments on the first time user experience. Uh, the first experiment we ran was to remove the old first time user experience called uh, fireboarding instructions. And surprisingly, it didn't hurt. Uh, then we tried a new improved first time user experience called the swiping tutorial, which improved the experience for women in developing markets. So we learned that first, what worked in the past may not work anymore. Uh, so it's worth questioning assumptions. And uh, swipe right might seem like second nature in the US now, but different cohorts may benefit from more or different education. That, that's an example of how our intuitions aren't perfect and why it's good to experiment. We may not represent our target demographic. Uh, you know, we're not all the same gender, uh, the same age, or, uh, we, and we don't live in the same locations. You might've heard of the term fail fast. Uh, you know, very, very popular in fast moving tech companies. Uh, so it's not a failure 
if you learn something. Uh, this is a, a nice visual example from SpaceX uh, as they've been testing their, their new uh, rocket called Starship. Uh, in this test, uh, the rocket was trying to land and then it exploded. And at the bottom here, you can see the wreckage from the explosion. Uh, uh, shortly thereafter, Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, uh, on Twitter wrote, you know, a technical explanation of what happened, but we got all the data we needed. Uh, congrats, SpaceX team. Hell yeah. So, uh, so the CEO was, you know, very excited, even though, you know, on the surface, it looks like a failure, but they still learned something from this test. Uh, at Tinder, we've learned from uh, other kinds of quote unquote failures. Uh, we've learned that there is a time and place to encourage adding profile bio text. Uh, this is something that you know, often comes up. Uh, we have learned, first of all, uh, from an experiment that it does help to show users' bios. Uh, the bio text you know, is uh, this example on the right um, about yourself in your profile. It helps to show it when it's available. Uh, we tested during user onboarding to present the option to add a bio. And uh, we learned that it actually didn't help them. Uh, we also tested requiring a bio on onboarding and even with instructions and explanations for you know, why it would be helpful, uh, that res resulted in user drop-off. Um, and finally, uh, we ran a test where we showed more lines of bio text on profiles uh, by default. And that actually inspired users who, who saw this to improve their own bio. Uh, so uh, the overall takeaway is there is a time and place to encourage adding bio text. Failing fast reduces risk. Uh, so SpaceX now dominates the commercial launch market. Uh, but it took a lot of explosions, uh, a lot of failed uh, rocket launches uh, to get to where they are now. Uh, they have a, they put together a compilation of all of their, their rockets exploding in this great YouTube video. Uh, I encourage you to search it up and, and check it out. And on the right, you can see uh, in this graph from The Economist how uh, their market share of the commercial launch market has just been uh, growing and growing and essentially taking over the market from other launch providers. Failing fast can be done with controlled experiments. Uh, A-B tests are not just about incremental optimization. So concepts for entire new products can be tested in the market. Uh, potential game art styles and settings have been chosen to good effect using uh, what's called a fake door test uh, in ads that only cost thousands of dollars compared to millions uh, for a complete development of a game. Uh, on a related note, some of the most successful game studios are the most rigorous about A-B testing and optimization. Uh, coming back to Tinder, we tested uh, this bottom navigation UI. And uh, it took us two tries to get it right. Uh, the second time was the charm. So the first attempt, uh, you can see a screenshot on the left here. Uh, we moved the buttons around and got rid of some buttons. Uh, that was not so popular with the users. Uh, our new design on the right uh, does seem to be working. In other companies, sometimes it takes even more than that. Uh, there's an example of, of a full screen photo light box UI that took five tries to get right. The first four times they A-B tested it, it didn't work. But on the fifth try, it finally did work. So the adage, if you, at first you don't succeed, try, try again, applies to experimentation as well. Uh, big swings may not work at first, since uh, most experiments aren't successful. There's a stat that about two-thirds of experiments are not successful. Absence of evidence 
is not evidence of absence. Just because one attempt at an idea didn't work doesn't mean that it can't ever work. And subtleties in design and implementation or in timing can make a huge difference. So my product at Tinder, it, we call Phoenix. It is a trustworthy platform that makes it fast and easy to set up, manage, and conclude controlled experiments. Our key feature areas are ideation and design of experiments, uh, configuration and management, then analysis and conclusion. And you can see a couple screenshots of our UI on the right. The usage of our platform is growing and we're about doubling every year, up to about 400 concurrent experiments. And at a certain scale, it makes sense to have an in-house experimentation platform. Uh, a lot of these big name tech companies you've probably heard of have their own experiment platforms, sometimes more than one experiment platform. And here are some inspiring quotes that I find meaningful. We got Jeff Bezos from Amazon, who has said that our success at Amazon is a function of how many experiments we do per year, per month, per week, per day. Uh, Google has said, experimentation is practically a mantra. We evaluate almost every change that potentially affects what our users experience. Netflix has said, every product change Netflix considers goes through a rigorous A-B testing process before becoming the default user experience. And then Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook has said, the key is building a company which is focused on learning as quickly as possible. Building a company is like following the scientific method. We invest in this huge testing framework. At any given point in time, there aren't, there, there's not just one version of Facebook running in the world. There's probably tens of thousands of versions running. And so I, I did a little analysis pulling together uh, publicly available information about how many experiments uh, companies are running concurrently and their yearly revenue. And there's a nice correlation here uh, that the more experiments companies uh, are conducting, uh, the more revenue they tend to be generating. Uh, Tinder is in line with this correlation. Um, and we hope to be growing you know, up and to the right here on both dimensions. So to wrap up, uh, or to begin to wrap up, here's a, a great example of an experiment it's a win-win where we promote civility with an are you sure message. Uh, this feature uh, was tested with a treatment where we inter intervene with an undo message prompt when members attempt to send a message containing objectionable language. Uh, the screenshot on the right, the person wrote DTF question mark. And then we pop up this message saying, slow down. Are you sure you want to send? Results from this experiment showed that fewer messages containing objectionable language were sent. Uh, we received fewer reports about harassment. There was no reduction in engagement of members <clears throat> who were given the prompts. And this feature called Are You Sure was well received in the press. And finally, for some practical advice for Tinder, uh, some tips for your photos that have been experimentally proven. Uh, first and foremost, show your face, uh, smile. Uh, it helps if you're not in a group so people know who exactly you are. Uh, instead of doing a selfie, you know, a topless selfie in front of a mirror, uh, you could take a picture on a beach where it's a bit more natural. And if you have a pet, like a dog, it's always very popular. Uh, so all of these tips have been proven via experimentation to help. So if you want to get started, I'd recommend maximizing your ROI uh, with these three key steps. First, concentrate your analytics on the most important KPIs and user dimensions. Focus your experiments towards the top of the funnel or where important interactions occur. Then build minimum viable products. Test early and often. So again, our takeaways today are A-B testing is a simple idea that can be simple to apply. It's useful for more than incremental optimization. A-B tests can yield deep insight. 
and just test it. A-B tests have the highest ROI of any data activity. If you like what you've heard about how we do experiments here at Tinder, uh, we are hiring. Uh, come check, it out, check us out on LinkedIn and see what open positions we have. Thank you. Thank you.